everybody. Welcome to our webinar for this week. Um, today we are doing what to expect in a match meeting. I'm so excited to do this webinar with you guys today. We have a special guest for our webinar. Sorry about that. We have a special guest for our webinar and we have Max. So Max, will you please introduce yourself and about your role here at Surrogate First? Yeah, so really nice to uh, to be with you today. Thank you so much for inviting me. So uh, my name is Maxime Le Boutelier. I'm an intended parent coordinator at Surrogate First. I've been at Surrogate First for about four years now. Actually, I just uh, had my fourth year anniversary at Surrogate First and about eight years helping parents in surrogacy um, you know, in the U.S. I'm French. I've been in uh, the U.S. for 12 years now. I'm located in Florida. And I've uh, been happy to uh, and privileged to help parents throughout the their uh, goal of parenthood. Yes. So um, today we are doing a topic talking about what to expect in a match meeting. So mm -hmm. Max facilitates match meetings all the time here at Surrogate First. And we're going to be giving you some tips, um, topics that are discussed during the match meeting. And first, I want to ask you, why is the match meeting so important? Well, the match meeting is actually the first time you uh, meet the sur your surrogate in person so or in person via Zoom. So it's the first time you meet with your surrogate. And it's really important because you are here to discuss all the different topics, the future uh, steps of surrogacy and the things that you want to, you know, talk about. The topics are communication, uh, relationship, how many embryos you have, terminate. So there's all kind of things that you want to talk about to make sure you're on the same page and uh, that you guys picked each other and you are the right people for each other. So that's why it's really crucial to have a good, successful match meeting. Right. And um, I want to talk about a little bit prior to the match meeting, we review each other's profiles. Mm -hmm. And so as an intended parent and as a surrogate, um, the agency will help you set up a profile. And these profiles are really in depth, I believe. How, how, big, how long are these um, profiles, Max? <laughs> Oh, uh, I don't know how many pages, but, you know, maybe 10 pages or so, you know, there's a, a letter that has been written by both parties, you know, there's uh, all kind of information about the, the parents or the surrogate, uh, what you want to do, um, you know, throughout the journey or, you know, termination topics and all kind of different topics. So it's a long, thorough profile that really, and there are different surrogates or parents are different. So, um, but they just have all the different information that you would want to know about, uh, especially, you know, uh, where the surrogate is, if she's married or not, you know, uh, how many pregnancies, complications or not, weight of baby, the, you know, uh, the date, you know, the, the weeks of the age of the baby when, uh, when uh, she gave birth, uh, uh, vaccinations, all kind of different things that are on those profiles. Yeah. So it's a yeah. really thorough and long profile. Yeah. And so prior to your match meeting, you guys will review each other's profile and say, hey, I would love to meet these people. And so it's kind of like you get a general idea of who you are meeting prior to the match meeting. You can see pictures of their family and just um, their expectations for the journey. Like like Max said, they have a dear surrogate letter or a dear intended parent letter. And can you tell us um, a little about about what they write in this letter? Yeah. So you know, they introduce themselves, talk about who they are, usually what they do for a living, you know, maybe the area they're at, you know, uh, um, talk about health issues, why they are here and what brought them to surrogacy, of course. And so, and after that, you know, hobbies and things. So you get to know them a little better. You get to understand why they are here and what they went through before. So you're able to really uh get a feel of who they are a lot of parents you know say oh my god she likes to uh you know run like us or she likes to uh, read books so i'm a big reader so you know you try to find common uh common points you know in, in each other or common things that you know you find in each other and at the end usually there is a um there's uh there's a part where it tells you, you know, how you feel about your surrogate and the gratitude that you have towards them. So it's a it's a thorough little letter that I think helps the surrogate and the parents get to know each other a little better without meeting. Yes, I will say when I um, was matching with my intended parents, 
when I was reading the letter, I, I found a lot of things that we had in common that I didn't expect. So it kind of did make conversation flow better. Um, like for example, that we, I have a dog and they have dogs. They love to be outside and fish. And that's something me and my family like to do. Yeah. So it's really nice to read these letters and get an idea of the family and even like show that little appreciation for something that we're about to embark on together. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I wanted to say, Oh yeah. How, what, sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase the question. Um, how is it, um, how do you prepare for a match meeting and do you have any advice um, in preparation? So usually surrogate first, we send parents and I mean, I'm, I'm working with parents so I can really talk about parents. I'm not sure what is done on the surrogate side, but probably the same thing. Uh, it's just a document that tells you, you know, where you should somewhere quiet somewhere you know with good lighting you know that you can focus on the meeting you know pay full attention to uh to your surrogate and um, and the coordinator so uh there's these things and there's also questions that are uh written so there's a list of questions that if me or the surrogate or whoever have not asked you can ask and it's just to get to know each other so it it, it explains and of course i mean i i do calls with my parents often and explain what's going to happen the different topics that i'm going to touch base on uh but we have documents that we share uh, we talk about it and i think what is helpful for my parents is usually and for surrogates is the coordinators are typically here they're usually here so you know i'm there i'm i guide the meeting i lead the meeting i ask all the questions so you don't have to be you know we'll say you have to prepare a little bit uh but i usually i'm the one leading the call so you just have to honestly transparent you know be transparent and uh, answer the questions as easy as that so yeah yeah and i think that's great because i feel like as a surrogate I was really nervous for my initial match meeting. I didn't know how it was going to go, but having the coordinator ask those hard questions and help the conversation flow is something that's really helpful, especially mm -hmm. since we're all new to this process. Yeah. And um, I wanted to talk about, so um, yeah, some of the topics that we're going to discuss. Um, one of the topics is like relationship and communication. Yes. And um, how do you... Um, talk about this during the match meeting and um, set clear expectations? Yeah, so, you know, that's the first question. Uh, first is introduction. So we introduce ourselves, you know, talk about who we are, what we do, hobbies, everything. And then, and then the first question I ask is what kind of communication do you expect during this journey? Of course, it's something that we can't plan on. Uh, a relationship is something that is organic, so it's going to come naturally. Uh, but we talk about that during the journey, what kind of communication and relationship do you expect and after the journey. So uh, the parents will start, explain how they feel, what they would like, you know, a regular contact, you know, oh, I want to live this journey with, you know, through you, right? So, but I don't want to, you know, be intrusive and I know you have a life and, uh, you know, so we're just talking uh, openly, but it's really important to be honest and transparent about what you want because that determines your future journey with your surrogate. So we talk about all of that during the journey, what kind of, kind of communication and relationship and also after, after birth. Uh, and again, we can't plan on how the relationship is going to go, but a lot of parents and surrogates it's a friendship that they build, you know? So over time, even though there's money and contracts and terms and things to, you know, it's at the end of the day, it's a, it's a human journey. It's a friendship. It's a relationship that we create is based on trust and communication. Uh, and, and if you build one during the journey, then most likely you're going to continue that after. But we talk about after, do you feel comfortable staying in contact, even though we can't plan on it? So it's kind of, how we touch base on that, how we, how we talk about that. Yeah, that's a great answer. Yeah. Something that really stuck out for me and my intended parents is the communication and the relationship. They mm -hmm. really let me know that they were comfortable with any type of relationship that I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I wanted to have that really close relationship and I was lucky enough to have that, mm -hmm. but something else was they said I could see the baby in the future. I could attend birthday parties and receive photos. And that was something really special to me. And when I was deciding to choose them as my intended parents, um, it kind of gave me some security that I was choosing the right people because 
it showed their true intentions. Right. And, um, yeah, so I guess I wanted to talk about like a little bit about the questions they ask about pregnancy and delivery. I know um, as a surrogate, like during the match meeting, I was telling them like, yeah, like I usually have huge babies and they usually mm -hmm. come out at like 38 weeks and just like how I act during pregnancy. Like, do I have morning sickness? Do I have cravings? There was some of those fun questions that we got to answer. Um, what are some other questions that intended parents or the agency will ask? Yeah. So, you know, it's really about first, there's a question about pregnancy, the actual pregnancies that the surrogate had and, you know, how did it go? You know, did you have C-section, you know, natural birth, you know, premature or, you know, any complication, any, uh, any, I don't know, I'm going to say preeclampsia. So it's the first thing that comes to mind, but it's a big deal, but, you know, gestational diabetes, I don't know, any complication, you know, morning sickness, like you say, nausea, whatever it is. So we'll talk about all of that and she can share a little bit about how her pregnancy went. And then the other things we talk about related to pregnancies and deliveries is is the birth is you know what kind of do you are you okay with the parents being with you in the room you know are you okay with them assisting to the birth or do you want us to step out and be behind the door and have uh, your support system next to you instead of the parents or all of them at the same time so we talk about that uh, we talk about if they're okay you know C section or natural birth, right? C-section, it's only usually uh, hospitals limit to one person in the room. So does the surrogate want to have um, the parents or one of the parents or does she want her support system or, you know, so, and again, things like that, we talk about it. And, but I think uh, I really emphasize the fact that we talk about it now, but let's see how it goes. And also maybe there's going to be complications and she wanted you in the room, but now she's a little scared of what's going to happen. So she wants her support system. So nothing is really set in stone for some of the topics, some of the topics. Um, but that's how, you know, we talk about pregnancy, deliveries, and try to understand who that surrogate is, what she went through for her previous journey. So get an idea of what the future will be. Yeah, I could definitely relate to that just because um, I was completely open to having my intended parents in the room when I gave birth. Um, the intended mom wanted to be, the intended dad didn't. Mm -hmm. um, but if it was one of those um, scenarios where I needed an emergency C-section, I think I possibly would want my support system mm -hmm. being there with me during that time, just because it's probably something very scary that I'm, I would have been going through and... So it's like, these are things that we would like to happen, but it's not 100% for sure with all the topics. Yeah, especially with, with C-section, I want to add is that actually now I don't really say, do you want the parents in the room for C-section? I tell the parents, you know, for this kind of scenario, if it is an emergency C-section, usually surrogate, you know, will choose the support system and it's something scary. So they may choose that. So I prepare them already to let them know that, you know, during that time, if it's a scary time, if it's something that is unexpected, a C-section, a surgery, then, you know, she might want her support system. But how, how do you feel? Is that, you know, are you open to even consider the parent so you know there are topics like that that is just we touch base on but we can't really give a, a concrete answer not knowing how things will be you know right and i'm talking about labor and delivery and things like that something that might come up during the discussion is the hospital like mm -hmm. have you had previous experience going to this hospital before potentially does this hospital provide a room for the intended parents because that's kind of like a 50 50 sometimes they provide a room sometimes they don't would the surrogate be comfortable with having the baby in her room if there is that type of scenario because sometimes the intended parents are domestic and sometimes they're international so mm -hmm. um, that's something that might be discussed as well with like travel times um i know and max works with like a lot of intended parents from paris mm -hmm. so it could have a long time trying to get there how long does that usually take max the flight well, you know, it's uh, from France, it's about a nine hour flight. So, you know, you have to if it's if it's something that is planned and no issues, but it's an emergency. If our oh, baby just arrived and, uh, you know, we were expecting to come in a month or two weeks or so, then usually parents, we ask them to get exchangeable tickets. 
uh, so they can exchange the tickets right away and jump on the plane. So it's usually, hopefully, within 24 hours, they'll be at the hospital. So then when baby is born at the hospital, and those, so we have birth plans, right? We, we were, you know, later on during, during the pregnancy, we'll sit down with the surrogate, with the parents, and with the coordinators just to make sure that we're on, still on the same page, uh, especially about anything related to, to birth. So on the birth plan, it will say, uh, you know, I, it's not something that we talk about during the, uh, the match meeting, but we, you know, start touching base on that is, uh, you know, if, uh, parents are not here, do you want, if you guys are not here and surrogate delivers, are you okay with the surrogate taking care of baby? Or do you want the hospital to take care of baby? And then that can be, you know, so these are different questions that are not really uh, talked about during the match meeting, but we'll talk about it during the birth plan later. So everything during the journey is being talked about and make sure we agree on everything. Right, right. It's important to talk about all these different things um, just to be prepared for the future. Mm -hmm. And um, the next thing I want to talk about is like IVF and clinic information and embryos. Um, this might be something that would be discussed um, during this meeting. Um, do you know any questions regards to that? Yeah, so we talk about embryos. How many embryos do you have? Okay, are they tested genetically? Do they have a PGS testing or PGT or whatever? You know, there's different genetic testing. Is it tested genetically? Okay, uh, you know, at surrogate first, you have to understand we transfer, we ask parents to transfer only one embryo at a time, it's single embryo transfers. Also, you have to understand that it's up to three embryo transfers maximum. So if the first one don't work, second, up to three uh, per your contract, but it's your clinic that has the last say. Um, so we talk about all of that to make sure we're on the same page um, and make sure that we have, you know, surrogates and, uh, you know, surprise when it's like, oh, actually, I just have one embryo. So we talk about that. We also ask parents to get an embryo report to confirm what was talked about. Um, but yeah, that's, that's about what is discussed regarding embryos. Right. Right. And I also want to talk about like sometimes timelines, um, depending on the intended parent you match with, if they already have their embryos created, or if they're waiting for testing, or if they're waiting on a donor, um, mm -hmm. timelines can range. So that might be important to talk about. Maybe the intended parents are like, oh, we would love to shoot for a June transfer or July transfer. So talking about the different timelines is something that would be good to discuss during this time, just so everybody's on the same page. Like this is what we're aiming for. Of course, mm -hmm. everything doesn't stick to plan, plan all the way, but yeah, like timeline and blackout dates, maybe, blackout um, dates. yeah, maybe the surrogates like, oh, I had this trip planned for more than a year in June and I would really make sure that we're not doing anything on that time. And that's something we would definitely want to discuss during this time. Yes. So we ask about, you know, as soon as, uh, no, uh, how Oh, when do you want to start? You know, do you want to start ASAP or do you have blackout dates, like you said, you know, or um, it's, it's rare, but some parents may ask, you know, can we delay the process and we match now, but we can, you know, uh, transfer in December, you know, or, you know, and so surrogates can say yes or no, but usually they discuss before we officially match, of course, so we get an idea, but uh. But yes, these are things that we talk about to make sure that we're on the same page, that there's no delay. Everybody has a life. Everybody has things to do. Uh, you know, we're humans. So we just want to make sure that everybody is available for the journey. And if not, we just need to talk about it and make sure we understand the, the different timeline. Yes. Right. And um, I, I would like to talk about some of the more serious topics that might be discussed during the match meeting. So I know um, termination and vaccination can be an iffy area to discuss. Like we said, um, this information will be on your profile, so everybody will be aware prior, but um, some surrogates might be very strict and say, I don't want any vaccinations, or I don't want this specific vaccination, or I'm not okay with terminating for this and this. Um, so can we talk about a little bit of the serious topics and why they're important to talk about or any that you can think of? Yeah, so termination of pregnancy is definitely a major topic. A uh, good thing is that we do talk about it during the on the profile. So we just 
share with each other what we wish or what we expect and of course we never know what's going to happen uh you know we can talk about that disease or you know that you know down syndrome or genetic issues or it can be it's so broad that we don't really know what the baby will go through or the surrogate will go through so we need to make sure we're on the same page um you know we'll have agreements uh terms of agreement about termination of pregnancy in the contract we'll have all kind of protections and agreement but uh it is something that is super important because uh it is their child is their parents child but it's the surrogate's body right so we all want to have a say we will all want to have uh, the rights to make a choice so at the end of the day you're all together making the choice together so we have to understand that we are on the same page and make sure confirm that we are uh, like you said, on the profiles, it talks about it. So it is really rare that we talk about termination of pregnancy or big, major, important topics without making sure that we are on the same page because of the profiles. But I have seen sometimes COVID, you know, COVID vaccinations or other things like that. I have seen where uh, parents look at a profile and, you know, that the the things that the surrogate shared about termination of pregnancy, we're not hundred percent convinced. We want to talk. So sometimes, you know, what we do is we ex to match, we exchange profiles, we send records to the clinic, and then we do the match meeting. Sometimes what we do as surrogate first is that we exchange profiles. And if there's a questions that parents have or surrogates have, we can meet in person before we send records. So we can do pre-match meetings, like I like to call them, just to make sure that, yes, we talk about the major topics, make sure that we're on the same page um, and clarify certain answers on the profile so before we you know uh we confirm no yes i don't want to work with her or yes i want to work with her we can also clarify things with each other you know so open communication and transparency is really key to this whole journey from the beginning to the end right i love that i love that so um another thing i wanted to talk about is um sometimes special requests um this would be a good time to talk about any special requests that you surrogate might have intended parent might have um what are some special requests that you have heard of in the past or yeah so uh you know diet restrictions i've heard about that of course you know different vitamins to take or not uh most of the uh, matches don't request that uh you yeah. know usually parents ask surrogates to you know keep keep her life the way she used to, you know, the way she has it and keep on doing her habits and, you know, just make sure it's healthy habits and, uh, you know, that she is doing the same thing, eat the same food, you know, she's had healthy pregnancies and she knows how to be pregnant. And so parent, a lot of parents trust the surrogate to make the right decisions, but some other ones for religious reason, for, for region, uh, reasons or for health reasons, you know, may ask to eat, you know, not a lot of sodas or fast food or, you know, pork, right. You know, to make sure that for religious reason or reasons or more. So there's all kinds of things that can be discussed. It is not often, uh, but some parents can definitely ask and request that. On the surrogate side, I would say it's more about, uh, you know, communication and, you know, a relationship that they want or not, you know, or a lot of surrogates are concerned about what parents want and expect. So they do ask, what do you want me to eat? What do you want me to do? You know, and then parents will answer what they want. But uh, I think on both sides, you have, you know, uh, you care about what each other want and make sure that you can offer that to each other. But yes, usually diet uh, more than anything. Yeah. Right. Um, I would like to ask, what are some things you should not discuss during a match meeting? Anything related to money. You don't talk about compensations. You don't talk about packages, benefits, or whatever it is. We talk about insurance um, and if she has insurance that covers surrogacy or not. But we don't go in the topic of, oh, wait, but how much is your premium and how much is the max out of pocket? Oh, no. These are things that the agency will handle will handle with each of the parties, right? So uh, usually money is not to be talked about. And if there's anything that is said that maybe shouldn't be discussed or shouldn't be said this way, you know, especially with language barrier or things like that, usually 
agencies or coordinators myself will jump in, you know, oh, well, hold on. So I will answer for the parents or for surrogate to make sure that, you know, this is something that we should maybe discuss later or, you know, or it is already agreed upon or we can talk about that you and I later. Uh, but yes, there are a few topics. Usually it's about money. We try to leave it, uh, you know, all the different legal terms in a sense or, you know, financial terms for, for uh, the agency. To right. Accept. Right. Yeah, that is that is a really good point. I don't think you should discuss anything about money during this match meeting. And um, we already reviewed each other's profile, so we get a general of idea of what we're agreeing to prior. Yeah, and also there's a composition agreement that is signed by the surrogate and by the parents. So if anything related to money, uh, if there are any questions, then the agency can talk about it and we can review the different documents that we have signed in the past. Yeah. Yeah, and... Um, if you are like a shy intended parent or a shy surrogate and you don't feel comfortable asking these questions, just bring it up to your coordinator, bring it up to your case manager. They are there to help you. And if you're like, I really want to have this question answered, um, yeah, just let them know prior and they could bring it up for you during this match meeting. Right. Yeah. And we, you know, we have maybe a way of saying things that, you know, uh, we're, we're experienced. We know what we're doing. So that's why we just want to make sure we don't hurt any feelings, but we also acknowledge what, you know, each party want to talk about for sure. Yeah. And to close it off, I would ask, um, do you have any tips or tricks um, for the match meeting that you would like to share? Um, just, you know, I'd say it's, it's an interview, you know, it's like a job interview, right? So I would say, and I'm talking about parents or surrogates. I'm not talking, you know, either or. It's just all of us. We have to be presentable. We have to, I would say, just be in, you know, in the meeting. Try to be present and really hear, listen, and talk. You know, sometimes I know life can be busy. You have kids and everything. If possible, you know, try to make sure we can focus on each other. Um, have good lighting. Have a good connection is is important. Sometimes we can't really control that, but what can make um, meetings a little difficult sometimes is when uh, it's hard to it's it's hard to get the attention of one or the other in a sense. You know, to really be able to be here, talk freely. So connection, lighting, uh, and focus on the meeting, not in your car while driving. You know, things like that. You know? yeah. So yeah, and just be you and. And just, you know, a lot of things will be talked prior on profiles with the coordinators and, but, but just be you, be transparent, be honest. And uh, that's what really matters in the, in the match meeting. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Max, for thank joining you. us today. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to me at jasenia at surrogatefirst.com. Max, how could they reach you if they want to reach out to you individually? So yeah, max at surrogatefirst.com. Uh, you can reach me there and all the different uh, social media handles. Same than uh, Yesenia, Facebook, TikTok. And yeah, so yeah, feel free to reach out to us if you guys have any more questions. And thank you guys for joining today. All right, I'll see you guys later. All right, bye. bye.